I really haven't played at a couple of these. Like, Ruins has made pretty clean runs all the way to winner's finals of these poplars. And I don't think he's run into Rickles. Rickles is kind of... Well, I know the last... Two weeks ago, Ruins kind of had, like, a joke. A jokey poplar where he didn't really try super hard. And more recently, he's been putting more investment into his... Uh, into his Poopler Creeks. So here we go. Game one. Battlefield is the pick. And it's again this Fox Ganondorf matchup. I am not surprised to see it. Not in the slightest. And Ruins is going to be playing super patient Fox here. He does not want to fall for any kind of silliness. He's just going to use his frame data to get an advantage and then push the issue. And there's the up air coming out. Not going to be enough to kill Rickles yet. You see Ruins just backing far away from that ledge. Kind of conceding the recovery to Rickles. Until he wants to put on pressure there. And there he's going to land that forward smash. Free laser. Takes it. But he dropped his shield a little bit too early. Oh, the chase. Okay. R Rickles is going to find his way out of that. Very excellently played by him. And now Runes is just going to get these grabs that he wants, but he doesn't get the jab out of it. And Rickles gets the pressure. Okay, he's looking for that SD, but instead he just finds the back air off of that jump up. And there you go, Rickles. He's uh, at 160, but the lack of kill confirms from Fox and his very light character means that he's just going to die, lose his first stock. But there, oh, Rickles is playing a little too cheeky. Unfortunate for him, he's going to lose that stock, and now it's even footing when it could have been a pretty big advantage for him if he had kept playing patient. Now Rickles is actually coming out pretty far ahead at the moment here. These trades are good for him, and there he's using that neutral layer very effectively. But, oh, this is this might be the edge guard he needs. Runes does not find that down smash. And I was talking so much game about Ruins' fair footstools, but he sees a, when you see that air dodge at the ledge right there, that's like the moment to go for the throat with a fair footstool, and Ruins missed it. However, he now has control of the stage, and it's pretty dominant control until that neutral air wrested it away from him. Reckles, he is not a stranger to just spending time on the ledge. That's the way Ganondorf works, is you just kind of can spend a lot of time on the ledge sometimes. And again, Max Rage online here for Rickles. Ruins needs to play very patient, and there, jab, jab, up smash, finds the confirm. And that is going to clutch out game one here for Ruins. The Fox main, who understands this matchup very well, as he plays both characters, he plays Fox and he plays Ganondorf now, don't forget. His Ganondorf is not to be slept on. Smashville is going to be the choice here for game two. And uh, this extra Smashville platform here can be super useful for Rickles as like a mix-up to get back on the stage, but Ruins can use it too. And there, you see Ruins is mixing in the shield, making sure that he doesn't just get hit with those, uh, those wizard's foots that have been interrupting his up-tilt combos. And now he's just, he's just playing a bullying game right now. Oh, but that's the shield break! Is this going to kill Yes! You can't just shield those. That is a quick turnaround after Ruins had a very dominant start to this game. And Ruins is going to let him land there, missing another punish. And okay. He's only at six, he's only taken 6%. Ruins, if he keeps playing super clean, he again, in theory, you should be able to play so clean that you never take damage against Ganondorf, but... This is not the world we live in where we can just play perfectly all the time. So, trying to keep this extra credit at a minimum is key here for Ruins. And he's sneaking in these back airs super well when Rickles plants himself for an up smash. Like, he finds that angle very nicely. And I generally like challenging Rickles offensively when he goes for an option like a side B. Offensive challenges... Rickles, or Ruins doesn't really have great lingering hitboxes to challenge the side B with. But... If he keeps playing patient, he can find a way to do it. But this is not really patience from Maroons we're seeing here. He's, like, trying to force the issue. 
But that was a nice tomahawk and a grab. And there he intercepts the jump with the back air. That was, okay, he was starting to look impatient and then he found his patience to make sure he can take that stock. <gasps> no fair footstool. Okay, everyone's living. Ruin's missing it there. That could have been his game just in an instant. And that could have been a fair footstool too, actually. Now Rickles is looking for these SDs. He's looking for all the Ganon tricks that he can find. And now Runes runs away. He knows his shield is very low. And he he likes shielding a lot. <laughs> so he doesn't want to shield. That's it. Game two falls in the ledger of Rickles. And now game three coming up. We're gonna have the same characters. And I think it might be an FD or a Duck Hunt. I imagine Duck Hunt was the ban from Rickles, and so that means FD is the pick. Naturally speaking. Quick lasers, of course. This is Ruins Fox. He is the laser king of Chicago. Although other foxes play obviously better. I think that, you know, Demise and Dom have very fantastic results this season. No fox lasers like ruins in Chicago, anyway. Ooh, that down tilt actually going to reach under those jabs. Good punish there from Rickles. Forward tilt. Oh. He could have gone for forward tilt fair footstool. That would have confirmed out of those up tilts. I'm almost certain he, was able, he could have been able to find that combo. Full jabs coming out once again. And he gets the tech chase with that dash attack. Rickles, he's always making sure to answer offensively, and that can lead to great trades. And that's kind of, I guess, a trait of Ganondorf players, is making sure you answer things with offense instead of defense. Because if you're just afraid and air dodging all the time, you're not going to trade. And Ganondorf wins trades with just meaty aerials. But speaking of a meaty aerial, that up air is, feels like an up smash in the air. Almost like Raster's up smash from Rivals of Aether sometimes. That can kill so absurdly early. And that's going to be a stock versus Ruins. I'm sorry, versus Rickles. And again, a big lead opened up here for Ruins. He does not need to play impatiently at all. He can just sit back, get a tech chase with a laser, if he wants, force Rickles to approach, and play his game. And the back area is going to play Rickles in a bad spot, but again, Ruins just content to let him get back on the stage and then get free damage. Forward throw to laser, true combo. Looking for a tech chase there. Didn't find anything. Okay. Rickles going to make it back on. Rune's going to get a grab release. Doesn't go for anything too tricky. He's again just retreating away. Doesn't feel confident enough to pull out his laser yet. But now he gets the up tilt here, and he's more than lapped Rickles. He is in a commanding lead. He does not need to approach into any of Ganon's kill moves. The Phantom Footstool, that actually baiting him to lose that stock on the Wift Fair, and that is going to be the 2-1 for Ruins, and he's looking to move on to Winner's Finals at this Poplar Creek. So there you go.